still have a dream. We've all seen these images before. The rich history of African Americans includes these faces and so many we've never heard of. The achievements of our ancestors carry us into the present. But who are today's history makers ushering in the future? To answer that question, just look to your right or your left. Shidi Fashions is basically an online fashion boutique. We basically provide elegant clothing with a taste of Africa. It's available to everyone around the world. Obviously family and friends in Nigeria and obviously here and just anyone around the world who has an interest in what we sell. If they like it and they want it, then we ship to them. Your account doesn't have to bleed for you to slay. Like That's one of our goals, just to uh, make sure people feel confident, like True confidence is not always in how you appear. That is a factor, but it's inner beauty and just being overall like just confident in who you are. Venture for America is basically a startup nonprofit that invests in other students so that they can also start their own. Um, so basically, the whole purpose of it is so that um, we can be job creators for other people. In the long run, Venture for America promises to fund my business. Um, so from the start to the finish. I didn't realize the significant role black businesses played in this country, I think, until after I graduated college. As I start to think about the possibility of making differences in the lives of people in the community, what it means to be an entrepreneur, to provide opportunities for people who need it in the community. Because going to school, the message was you go to school, you earn a degree and you work for someone else. I like to have that like independence where I get to choose how I want my life or my day to play out. And that's one of the beautiful things about owning a business. Like you get to, you have that autonomy over not just like how you want your day to look, but how you want your business to be ran. We want to start our own. We want to just do something different for our community, whether it's like restaurants, whether it's like a clothing brand or something big. Black businesses play such a significant role in providing opportunities for people in the community. And also because our people are so talented and motivated and have ideas and, and they want to share with the rest of the world. But the sad reality of it is that a lot of black owned businesses have a short lifespan, if that makes sense. The United States has over 27 million businesses. Less than 10% are black owned. Meanwhile, we continue to lead the nation in poverty. Let's say that you have $10, right? That money circulates in the black community for six hours. In the Jewish community, it circulates in that community for 20 days. In an Asian community, it circulates in that community for a month. In a black community, it circulates for six hours. It has been said that the average black family doesn't even have a thousand dollars in a savings account. Black entrepreneurs are starting off at, as a deficit, not having the capital to start businesses. So what are we doing? But we're so busy spending money on like Jordans and just things that we don't even need. Like, why do we need 15 pairs of sneakers? Like, when you could invest that in books, or why are we standing in front of 2K playing, like playing 2K or Fortnite for hours when you could be making money doing something else? I think we need to get into ownership mindset because if we're all owning businesses and we're all like, you know, doing great things and just having something that not just supports ourselves but supports the community, then it builds, it generates long-term wealth. Your money matters. The black dollar is very powerful, whether we know it or not, but we decide to spend it on things that really don't help us. And I think that's something that we should always be conscious about is the fact that you have a choice. As I was creating this film, I had my own choices to make. Weeks passed and I stressed about finding a business owner to interview. But then I realized I too was overlooking the black businesses closest to me. And that's when I decided to interview my dad. I came here as a student uh, back in 1978. I came purposely to study accounting. After finishing my accounting degree, I worked in a bank for about a year and uh, went back home and also decided to come back uh, to America to uh, pursue 
my career in accounting and to try to establish something, some uh, source of fund for my family. I thought uh, I should add something to the regular salary and I decided to go into preparing taxes. That's what Hope Tax Service is all about. When you do people taxes, in many occasions when they try to, to refund, you put smile on their faces, they're happy. So that's rewarding for me. Initially, I started with about five or 10 customers and start growing. And uh, personally, now I have about maybe 100 or 150 customers. Uh, after observing some people, you know, learning from them, you know, see what they do and stuff like that, then I just decide to say, okay, it's time for me to start my own. For me personally, I just have a strong connection because my mom's a business owner. Um, and I think all of my life, I just grew up seeing her just like grind and hustle um, and then seeing how my dad plays a role in that and how I get to play a role in that. Most people don't know this, but back in Nigeria, my dad was a doctor. He got called into the ministry, basically. And it's hard to, you know, have built a career and then kind of have to start fresh. It took a lot for him to sacrifice basically everything that he's known, but his perseverance and his trust in God, like, took him all over the world. So when God really calls you to do something, like, he really makes a way and he makes provision for his vision. And so I truly believe in that. And those are characteristics that continue to encourage me and I hope encourage my sisters as well. It's so important for people to have others who look like them, whether it's in business or in the world of education. It's solidify for them that they too can make that next step and thrive. If I see more business owners or if I have a, bus a dad who's a business owner, a mom who's a business owner, then it's like, okay, like they did it, like I, so I can definitely do it. And I can probably take that business and expand it to be even more. Because when you start something new, um, it's important to have a guide, if that makes sense. Have someone to be there to encourage you. And when you're facing something that you haven't faced before, it's easy to give up because you don't know how to handle that situation. I believe two semesters ago, I was doing research on H&M and the reason why like brands like H&M or Forever 21 or just particular brands are so cheap is because the workers really don't get paid anything. They are laboring while we're getting cheap clothes. Um, as opposed to supporting a business who you know is very ethical or supporting a business where you know the mission is like about empowering the community. We run an after school program and one of our goals is to, in the future, be able to fund children to attend because a lot of the children that attend our program I would say they're low-income families, um, and most of the time, like even though the payment is nothing crazy, it's not something they can like easily afford. So obviously, our goal is to hopefully, sometime soon, but in the future, be able to like fund low-income children who need that extra help that they may not necessarily get in school. Most of my customer middle-class uh, income Anna, and as a few you know, low income Anna as well. This is a, a business that is reliable, that is trustworthy, you know, that people can say, okay, I did my taxes with this guy, I've been doing it with him for years, and I have no problem. What are you leaving behind when you're, when you're gone? How can they learn from my life and do it even better than I did? And I think that's kind of like my life's model, is like, how can I, give back but also create a path where other students can like look up to me and aspire to to be somewhat like me and better. Our students are so motivated and talented. They pride themselves on being excellent. It means that I am so proud when I see the posting on social media. I'm the first to congratulate them. I'm the first to serve as a cheerleader, so to speak. I hear a lot of people saying, you know, yeah, you, you know, you, you own a business. That's that's awesome. Like congratulations. And yes, it's good to like encourage, um, you know, entrepreneurs and people doing great things. But it's another thing to actually be there for them because, like I mentioned before, especially with entrepreneurs that are starting out, it's not always easy. So being there for emotional support, sometimes they might just need to vent, like, yo, this is what is going on with my line right now and like I can't even think with exams and you know just being there for emotional support and obviously if it's a business financial support as well why not support someone who looks like me 
um, and invest in other students who look like me. I think that's super important. The more of us are out here with businesses, the more that we can rise as a community. Find a business and invest in it um, and just support it. And if possible, also create your own business, start up your own thing, and there'll be people there to support you as well. Someone the courage to start. If you fail, it's not the end of uh, life. Any failure people have, you learn from it. It's not really a complete failure like people call it. You learn from it and you can start something else. But it's always good to start uh, something on your own. We all have an idea that's in us but it's only a few that actually pursue it. I always try to challenge myself and say, if fear was not a part of the equation in my life, what type of person would I be? And I think that's a question that each and every single person should ask themselves. If fear was not an equation, who would you be?